Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and welcome to our presentation. This is part of our best practices series for going beyond the lines in Blackboard. Today, we're going to have a presentation by Dr. Anthony Gatling and our senior instructional designer, Christine Ditzler. My name is Gary Gates. I am going to moderate the presentation. And what we'll do is I'm going to mute everybody's microphone while they're doing their presentation. If there's any questions you have, please feel free to throw them down there in the chat. And that way, um, they can be addressed after they're done going through their presentation. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Chris Ditzler. Hi, and welcome. I'm glad to have this opportunity to visit with you today, and I appreciate you joining us. Um, to, get, to talk about what we want to present today, we, our staff here on, at Online Education is in teams, and our team includes artists, programmers, and instructional designers, and the other member of the team who is so vitally important is the faculty member that we work with. And sometimes, you know, we come up with some great ideas, and when we do, we'd like to share them. One of the things that um, we talked about when I started working with Dr. Gatling in the hotel college with a course that he was working on was doing something different. We talked about the limitations in Blackboard. We talked about things that um, we would like to do rather than keep it the way it was. One of the problems is the linear, and that's why we call this, this webinar today Going Beyond the Lines. Everything in Blackboard is linear. When you go into a module, everything is in a straight line. Um, when you build a module as an instructor, all of your pieces are in a straight line or a folder. Everything is linear. It goes A, B, C, D. And we wanted to try something that was unique and different. We sat down. We talked about what our options were and what we could do. One of the things that we really were interested in, Dr. Gatling was really interested in, was being able to be mobile. A lot of our students are on their phones or smartphones, they're on tablet computers, and to be able to allow them to access the material in the classroom on a mobile device was very important. There were, however, limitations in Blackboard. Um, limitations such as embedding discussions, embedding quizzes, and so forth that were gradable. We're still working out those issues, but the bottom line is at this point, students can access some parts of a large portion of the class, particularly the content, on their mobile device through the interface, but they have to go back to Blackboard for their assignments and their, their, their tests, their assessments. Um, the new interface that, that Dr. Gatling is going to show you, it's fun. It's very different. It looks very different in Blackboard, and it looks there. It looks very different on a mobile device. Um, it allows students to engage in the content, or allows them in each module to see how far they progress so far in the class, and it allows them to toggle quickly back and forth to all of their content material. Um, I have to say that I was really excited to work on this project. The team that we worked with. Our instructional artist was um, Lisa Label, and she did a fabulous job, as you'll see, um, during Dr. Gatling's presentation. And Shannon Peavy was our programmer who worked real hard to make sure everything worked well um, and did what it was supposed to. And then I, as the instructional designer, um, helped put the content in and build it and so on and so forth. Um, I'm really, I, I think that you're going to enjoy seeing some, something that you can do differently in Blackboard. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn, oops, I lost my page here. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Gatling so that he can show you his course and talk about how his experience has been and how his course works. And so without further ado, there you go, Anthony, it's all yours. Beautiful. Well, it's a it's an honor to uh, to be here on this on this webinar with Christine and 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 Gary. Uh, they have been uh, phenomenal in, in really helping me to uh, to sort of navigate you know the the technical side 
of, of what I really wanted to do. You know, I've only been teaching now uh, for about a year and a half. I'm right out of industry. So uh, I, I know the, the difficulty that working adults have when it comes to uh, going to school full time and, 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 or even part time and, and working a full time job. And, and I know a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in, in, a, a lot of the demands of work, you know, uh, really leave very little time to, to access course material. And, and, and to get into to, to the website uh, where learning takes place. Uh, so I thought that if there was a very uh, smooth uh, and easy way to display course content for students, um, uh, that, that it would in, enable and enhance, you know, sort of the learning process. So I talked to Lisa, I talked to Chris, and, and we sort of came up with, with this design. Um, I just want to take you through some of the models and just sort of talk about uh, the, the, the way that we, we thought through this. Uh, we decided to, you know, to use, you know, this, this sort of an interface where you are sort of starting uh, the course modules and, and each time you open up a new module, the, the piece on the board advances to the, next, to the next module. So students are able to click on module one. Uh, this is the interface that, that comes up, <clears throat> and <clears throat> when they click on the <clears throat> the sign here, <clears throat> and this is uh, we're talking about definitions of leadership. You know, they're they're brought to this interface where there's tabs, and, and in each tab, <clears throat> they can find course information that's pertinent to that week's <clears throat> um, material, <clears throat> whether it be an outline for me, whether it be you know just talking about some of the, the learning objectives uh, within the, the textbook. Uh, and, and also, you know, in my first, um, in my first module, I, I also listed sort of what was expected around the discussion board. Uh, and then I usually almost always have a weekly items due tab <clears throat> so that at a glance they can see everything that's due. Uh, in that particular week. Now, I started, you know, this semester out with the, uh, with a plan of having weekly online collaborations, but after the first week, I realized that, uh, these are working students and, and, and most of them were not able to, to, to join an online collaboration at, at any time, because I, I did, uh, reach out to, to, to see if there was a, a common time that would be available. So I sort of scratched this idea of uh, doing online weekly uh, collaboration meetings. I, I really was excited about it, uh, and Gary worked, you know, very closely with me on the technology piece, but uh, I just couldn't get enough students that were available at, at one specific time to, to join in uh, in that a collaboration meeting. So once again, you know, students are able to access the course, course content by just clicking on the tabs, and, and it's very visible in their mo mobile devices, and they're able to sort of study on the go, if you will, <clears throat> using uh, this kind of, uh, of, a, of an interface. You know, I'm, I'm just going to click through a couple of, mo a few of the modules here uh, just to kind of show you how I, I did some things differently. Um, you know, I dropped an article into this particular module uh, that students were able to, to, to read uh, and, and really answer their questions in the discussion board. One, one of the limitations that we have with Blackboard, uh, relative to this particular interface is, you know, really not able yet to, to bring, um, the discussion board, uh, into, into this interface. And, and I know Chris and I have talked about ways in which, you know, we might be able to, to do that, but if right now the limitations uh, from from what I understand, the limitations in Blackboard don't necessarily permit us, or we haven't figured out a way to to sort of link the discussion board into into this particular interface quite yet. So you know, again, you know, the weekly item, and and, it, and the good thing about this is everything that they need for uh, a weekly module can 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 be found here. You know, one of the things that uh, really is nice is you can customize these tabs, uh, and and there's quite a 
uh, you know, a few things that you can do that, that's pretty cool. Here's an article that I wrote that I just shared with the students, and we had some discussion questions on, on it relative to, to authentic leadership. Um, I did get their <clears throat> insights and input, you know, on, spir on a spiritual leadership model. I posted uh, a discussion uh, about that. Uh, so there were um, but there was some good feedback from students um, in terms of, you know, the, their their um, the ease and the, and the comfort of accessing, you know, uh, information uh, through this particular interface. Um, you know, one of the things that you can do in this interface, you can, for example, here, you know, I put a, an article, uh, a link to an article, and all they have to do is click on the link. And, and the article comes up for them right on their mobile device. They don't have to click, you know, through all these different, uh, you know, uh, layers um, to sort of get to the information that, that they need to, to, to complete, you know, the, the, the modules each week. Uh, I also, um, let's see, let me go back to seven. Um, no, actually, I want to go to, I, I also dropped, um, just to show you a uh, video, you can actually, oh, sorry, you can actually embed video into this particular interface as well. So when we had our discussion about power in leadership, uh, I was able to, to sort of embed a, a link to a video that I did, uh, sort of a, a short lecture video. On, on power. So not only can you, uh, you know, put articles, drop articles into the interface, but you can also uh, link videos. And, and in this way, you know, again, the students are able to find everything that they need uh, in, in one particular location. Um, so I think that's, that, that, that's all I've got. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the beginning uh, of, of the process here in terms of developing this interface and, 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 and quite frankly can see um, us continuing to develop this, this particular uh, approach to learning, uh, particularly when it comes to the mobile, uh, the mobile uh, platform. Uh, I, I really believe that it will enhance student, student learning and student uh, engagement. So Chris, I am going to, if I can, figure out how to do it. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, yeah, Gary can switch it back over to me too. There you go. Perfect. And so, um, thank you so much. I have a question. I, I wanted, I did want to, um, to see your comments about, um, can you, I don't know if you can see my screen yet. But um, about the um, limitations, what were there any? Have there have you found any complaints about um, the um, the limitations that your students found in Blackboard in any way? Uh, no, n not at all. To the, to the contrary, the comments were pretty favorable in terms of the interface. Um, the 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 ease of accessing the information was um, was was very apparent to the students. Uh, so 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 no real limitations on their side. From a teaching perspective, I, I've seen limitations clearly with the discussion board. Uh, you know, I, I would, you know, sort of like to see email integrated uh, into into the interface. You know, it, it, it's 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 so much easier, I believe, for the student when everything can be found in one particular interface. Uh, so, you know, if there's any limitations, I would say it's it's, it's really on on side of Blackboard and just you know not being able to sort of embed things. Uh, everything that that, that 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 I'd like to see embedded in 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 the uh, in the interface. Yeah, I when we talked we talked at length about that about um, the issue with with trying to get the the discussions linked and everything like that. And we're still working on that. I have to say that 
Um, for anybody who is interested in trying a new interface like this, something that is mobile, um, those are issues that we continue to work on. And hopefully, you know, having the opportunity to work with, with your course and actually test it out to see how the students responded to, to the mobility and the function of this different kind of new interface um, allows us some flexibility of, of practicing and trying those kinds of, you know, what ways we can make it better. Embedding the videos and embedding the links and all of that is certainly hugely valuable to the students in the content delivery. So I, you know, I think I think it turned out well. Um, from my perspective as the instructional designer on the project, I, I would have to say, it not only was it fun to work on, it's fun to see the end result too. Um, and so, with all of that, having looked at that, I, I would like to take a few moments for everybody to toss any questions they have out there. Um, Gary, can, can you unmute the, do you want to unmute the speakerphone or do you want to do the questions in the chat box? Um, it might be, might be best to do the questions in the chat box, but I can go ahead and unmute everybody. Okay. so. Please, does anybody have any questions from Dr. Gatling or myself on, on this? Everybody's unmuted, so everybody should be go ahead, uh, good to go. Yeah, your speakers are working, so you can jump in there and ask a question. I have a question. This is Cody, and I'm an instructional designer here, and I love, love the course. It looks fantastic. You guys did an awesome job on it. And I'm wondering, my question actually is for Chris, um, if someone, do you plan on using like a similar pattern for other courses as well or was, because that graphic that Lisa made looks really exciting and I'm wondering, I'm like thinking maybe other, for other courses perhaps, or I don't know, just wondered what you guys think about that. We do have another course, thank you Cody. We do have another course, it's a criminal justice course. It's actually a statistics, a statistics course and we've been working on that interface. We haven't launched it in the in the classroom yet, but in that particular interface, um, the one that we just looked at, it's got the game board where the students, you can see the progression, like he showed you the different modules. If, if you're in module one, you're on piece number one. If you're in module six, you're on piece number six. And the little pieces, your, your other pieces move along with you as well, which is kind of fun. In the criminal justice one, since it is statistics course, it's a statistics course, each module has four components, and there's a, a big um, um, bar graph in the background that shows which module you are on. And then in the center is a pie chart that is divided into four pieces. And when you step on the pie chart, you click on the pie chart piece for like section two, that takes you to section two, but it also indicates that section one is lower and it's done. Section two then becomes lower. And section and three and four are still raised. I don't know if that if that is giving you enough of a visual image, but it's also um, that interface. Just looking at that interface tells you your progression in the course and how far you have left to go in that course before you reach the end. And it, it is just it's just a um, it's a it's a platform that goes into the content. Yeah, I love it. I think it looks awesome. And I, if I were a student taking the course, I would be much more motivated stepping in there and seeing how I'm progressing and seeing the little pieces. I don't know. You know, I just think it's very motivating. So good job, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions out there? I'll actually throw out, I just, as an, a 3D artist, to hear that faculty and the IDs are so willing to do things like that, even if it's just for presentation purposes. So I know it's not necessarily as uh, impactful as the content itself. Just being able to go outside the box and do things like that, it's really exciting because it helps us take our courses to another level. And I, I will say that one of the keys, I, I, and I'm, I, I know I'm emphasizing this a lot, but one of the things that that Dr. Gatwick and I talked about at length that was so important was the mobility. You know, more of, as you know, all of our students, I mean, you walk down the campus, what are they doing? They're staring at the phone. 
And so, like Anthony said in his presentation, allowing them to, you know, so to speak, learn on the go is hugely helpful. If they have a 15-minute break at work, they can pull up their that article on their phone and read it, or on an iPad, or on a Galaxy tab, or what have you. It makes it easily accessible for them, and I think that that is hugely important. Definitely. Anthony, do you have any last comments or stuff? And I, I'll, if not, I'll finish up and make some last comments real quick. No, I'm just looking forward to the future. I think we're off to a great start here with what is possible. And, uh, you know, I think that expanding beyond the boundaries of Blackboard is a wonderful thing for, for not only for students, but also for instructors because, um, you know, to be effective, I, I believe, in, in teaching in the online world moving forward, you know, we've got to be able to leverage technology. We've got to be able to make learning more accessible uh, for, for students. That's all I got. And I will say that, you know, having faculty, you know, that we work with, we work with so many wonderful faculty, and having faculty that are that are willing to to do exciting new stuff is is it makes our work day so much more enjoyable and easy and fun, you know, to do the exciting things, to try out new technologies. Um I know that there's there's so with all the talents, bringing in the talents and the ideas and the knowledge of the faculty member, with the gifts that the that our programmers and our artists have, and tying that whole team network together, can produce something that's phenomenal that benefits our students at UNLV in so many wonderful ways. And so, to get the word out there and show what we're doing, I think is is a huge progress step in the right direction. And so I really, really appreciate everything that you've done for this project. And I appreciate anything any other faculty are, you know, are, are willing to work with us on too. And so I think it's an exciting thing. And so, um, and further, I appreciate your time. It was wonderful having you. It was great doing a webinar with you. I have to say, it was fun. Um, we really, really appreciate your feedback from everybody who is here today. And so if you would like to um, give us a little, uh, fill out our evaluation. Um, Gary, can you shoot that out to everybody, that URL? Yeah, I'll send it to uh, all the participants after the conclusion. Perfect. And so um, I guess I guess that's all we have. I have. One last time, does anybody have any final questions or comments or um, even just tell us what you think about the the interface that you saw today? Looks like that's it. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony, and I will talk to you later. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Gary. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and. Have a good one.